AEAT. You've probably heard it before if you work with SEO, and it's an extremely important ranking factor today. It stands for experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. And it's a way Google measures your website on, among many other ranking factors. I have found a tool that can help you with just this, and the tool is Page Optimizer Pro. Let's get into it. Google ranks websites on hundreds of different ranking factors, and ever since AI really surfaced and is now an implemented part of so many different websites, we see so many new updates from Google. Before we would maybe see two or three core updates a year, but now we see so many core updates, and this is especially because of AI. And EEAT is also a ranking factor, which is more important than ever. It's not a new ranking factor, but since AI has really been implemented, EEAT is a way for Google to show whether a website is a real person or not. Of course, this is also combined with backlinks, and that's why it's so important that you focus on EEAT. And once you nail it, and once you have the setup, then you don't have to think about it on a daily basis. Page Optimizer Pro can do a lot more than only measure your pages on EEAT. It can also measure your pages on NLP using Google's API. And NLP stands for Natural Language Processing. So this is the way that Google is categorizing your specific pages and posts and to see whether you're using the right words or not. So this is extremely valuable and it is a common way of writing content today. But let's dive into the analysis of each page and post. When I first started using Page Optimizer Pro, I did find a little steep learning curve, but once you get a hang of it, then it's super easy to use. They have a lot of explanation videos and the more you use it, the easier it becomes to use on a daily basis. But when you analyze your page, unless you're on the unlimited plan, then you use one credit. And if you want to analyze for Google NLP and you also want to analyze for EEAT, then you use three extra credits per page. But what I will recommend you to do is to analyze your EEAT once and then fix all the issues showcased by Page Optimizer Pro and then run it once more to ensure that you have fixed everything correctly. Because then you don't need to run EEAT anymore because you know now it's in order. Of course, if Page Optimizer Pro adds more features to the EEAT functionality, then you need to run it again. But it's just to highlight that you shouldn't run the EEAT analysis on every single post unless your design changes drastically. For me, it's definitely a downside that I have to spend a credit every time I analyze a page. It almost forces me to go and upgrade to the unlimited plan because as soon as you write more than just 20 content pieces, if you only analyze your pages, then you spend all your credits. And of course you can buy more credits, but it doesn't make sense compared to what the unlimited plan costs. But even though when you are on the unlimited plan, then you still have to pay credits to run the EAT analysis, the NLP analysis, and if you want to use the AI. So it is not unlimited on all functionality, it is only to analyze pages. Now, when we dive into the analysis itself, I really like the overview I get. I can see the entire structure of the page. I can see how is it going with my headings, my subheadings, where do I need to improve, and whether you have enabled NLP or not, then here you also get some NLP words that you need to incorporate into your articles. So overall, I like the depth of this content brief because it gives me the overview I need to see whether my article is heading in the right direction or not. In the second area of the report, you have content prompts, and here you can see more data related to your headings and your subheadings. You can also see related keywords and related queries, and then you can see the titles of your competitors. To be honest, I didn't find this part of the analysis that helpful. There was no in-depth analysis of the competitors and the headings. Of course, it makes sense for me to see how many headings I should use to ensure that I'm covering the entire subject. But if your query doesn't have a lot of data, then you will find out that related keywords and related questions are just completely empty. And then you only have the titles from your competitors and the overview of your headings. And then it becomes a little bit obsolete. But now to the exciting part of the analysis, EEAT. The founder, Carl Roof, behind Page Optimizer Pro, he has found that there is a set of criteria you need to fulfill in order to follow the best practices within EEAT. And Kai Roof, he is really an expert within EEAT. 
within the EEAT module, there are 22 parameters your post is measured on. And this is everything from whether you have a terms of service page, if you're displaying a contact page, your phone number, and so much more. So all of these parameters, you need to fulfill as many as possible. The best scenario would be if you could fulfill all 22, but often it's not relevant. For instance, terms of service is not a page that is relevant for all websites. So that one you could skip, you could also add it, but it's entirely up to you and that specific one. But the other ones you should really look into because the more of these different parameters you fulfill, the better your chances are to rank better on Google based on your EEAT. And of course, it's not only EEAT that is the ranking factor to see whether you're ranking or not. There's also your backlink profile and hundreds of other different ranking factors. But EEAT is definitely something you need to focus on today. Page Optimizer Pro also analyzes your competition on the specific keyword for EEAT. And here they analyze to see whether the competitors are fulfilling all of these 22 different parameters. What I did find with this is that it's not always 100% accurate. Sometimes it would say that a page had a customer service page, even though it didn't. Other times it would say that it had a terms of service page, even though it didn't. So sometimes you need to take this with a grain of salt and try and analyze it yourself. At least you have the 22 parameters to pursue so you know what to look for both on your own website but also on your competitors and you should at least fulfill the same amount of parameters as your competitors to ensure that EAT is not a ranking factor that you're losing out on. The last module of the analysis is Google NLP and this comes from Google's NLP's API. So this is the way that Google reads and analyzes your page and categorizes it into specific categories but it also showcases specific words and terms you should be using in your article or in your post. What it also does is that it analyzes your competitors to see how they are doing. And this I really like to use. This is where you can really go in depth with your content and see whether my content is as good as my competitors from a Google standpoint. Of course, remember that this is not everything. You shouldn't go all out to fulfill all of these NLP criteria. But what you should do is at least use them as inspiration and then remember that you're writing for a reader, you're not writing for Google. So you need to find somewhere in between where it's a good combination of both. So you satisfy Google, but definitely also satisfy the reader. But I really like this module because it gives me an idea whether my content is heading in the right direction or if it categorizes as something completely different. From the page analysis, you can go in two directions. Either you can use Page Optimizer Pro's AI to write your content, or you can simply use their content editor. And in their content editor, Page Optimizer Pro does pull in all of your content. But what I found was that it pulls in the entire website. So you will have to remove the footer, the menu, so you only have the pure content from your article. I've seen a lot better examples on this. For instance, Phrase is very good at only pulling in the content of the article. But of course, it's super fast just to delete the header, delete the footer, and then you have the content itself. And the design of the content is not super appealing. And I believe when you spend so many hours writing content in an editor, it needs to be appealing to look at. But beside from that, then you have all of your analysis in here. And this is something I always ask for. It's so often I see SEO tools do a perfect analysis. But as soon as we need to start writing the content, then all of that analysis is hidden away in some tab somewhere. Here you get all of your analysis in the sidebar where you can see related queries, related keywords. You can also see all of the NLP keywords you need to incorporate into your text. You can see an optimization score and so much more. This is what I want when I write content. I want to have everything in one view because that's the most optimized way for me to work because I have everything and I don't need to click away from my content. I have it everything right there. And if you get stuck in the content editor, then you can always change to use the AI to continue to write. Just remember when you use the AI, then you have to spend your credits. But when I first saw the entire page analysis, I felt overwhelmed. There is so much data and statistics and so much text to dive into. So what I'll recommend you is that you split it up into sections and then take one section by time. Because over time, it will be much easier for you to analyze your posts and your articles and then write better content based on this. Don't get overwhelmed with all of the content and all of the data you get. 
it'll be super useful in the end. Now, one last thing you can do with all of your posts is to use the watchdog feature. And the watchdog feature is a way to monitor all of your posts because as you know, Google changes constantly. And so does Page Optimizer Pro because they want to follow along Google and ensure that all of the improvements and tips they give are based on the newest guidelines from Google. So with Watchdog, it will automatically monitor your page or post either monthly or quarterly, and then it will tell you what has changed, what you need to do in order to stay up to date on all of the updates coming from Google. And especially now with AI, we see more and more updates from Google. So Page Optimizer Pro is perfect for me to help me with my EAT. And I will almost recommend you to sign up just for the EAT feature. It is so important. Just sign up for a month and then ensure all of your EAT parameters are fulfilled. And of course, if you like Page Optimizer Pro because it is a very in-depth analysis you get, then continue to use it and write your content in it. You can also start with a seven day free trial or you can sign up for one of their paid plans. They have three different plans and the unlimited plan is definitely where you get the most functionality and the most features because you can run as many reports as you want. You still need to use credits on Watchdog, AI and the EAT plus NLP to just be aware of this. I will say that if you are a content creator in general and you write content for websites, then Page Optimizer Pro is definitely for you because you get this in-depth analysis of each query that you run and you can write content in there and optimize it on the fly. I want to give Page Optimizer Pro four and a half star. It's an almost perfect product, but the fact that so many things cost credits is a bit of a letdown for me. But if you want to see my favorite keyword research tool at the moment, which is as important as optimized content, then you can do that right up here. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.